Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Are you going to play a song for us, Francie? Yes. What is the name of the song? La 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 la. Okay, play. Bravo! Yay! Let's clap hands. Bravo, Francie. My name is Wanner Puchert, and this is Finding Frequency. So I have a guitar hanging in my room. Um, it's actually an electric guitar that a friend of mine won at a concert in South Africa, and it's signed by a well-known South African punk band called Fuzzy Gish. Man, does that bring back memories. They're like a punk ska band, relatively well-known in the punk circles in South Africa. And uh, what is even more special about Fuzzy Gish and the reason I bought the guitar from my friend after he won it, and I actually secretly really wanted to get my hands on the guitar, he won it in a raffle at this concert and um, walked away with it. And the very next day I contacted him, said, listen, can I buy this guitar from you, please, man? And uh, he was friendly enough to sell it to me. And now I have this autographed Dean and uh, I brought it from South Africa to Poland. Um, it's got a special place in my heart. And the joke is I can't really play guitar, to be honest. I have two guitars, I also have to admit. And uh, the special thing about this guitar is that I can now also introduce the guitar to Francine. Perhaps he'll pick it up. My mom is a, is a aficionado when it comes to guitar. So uh, I, I wish that... I picked up her talent, but uh, I think it skips a generation, so I think it might go to Francie. Um, but uh, the other story around this Dean guitar is that um, I started doing podcasting years ago. Funny that I'm still doing that, right? And I used to run a paintball podcast. That was the first podcast I ever did with uh, three of my friends, and uh, we got to interview some really um, well-known pro paintball players. Um, I remember we still had to manually code the RSS feeds for this podcast, and we slapped it together. We had special permission from South African bands to use their music. Um, but let me tell you this. It was embarrassingly probably one of the weirdest and worst podcasts ever produced because there was ample amount of swearing, sexism, um, rowdy young men talking nonsense and uh, getting way ahead of themselves. And the funny thing is, like a few months ago, I tracked one one of the episodes down and listened to it. And I remember one of my friends was really upset with me, like never giving him a chance to speak. And I have to admit that I really never gave him a chance to speak in this podcast. I'm embarrassed. It's mostly because we also consumed ample amount of alcohol during the course of the recording. Let me tell you this. It's embarrassing, but I think back to it fondly, and I miss those days so much. Um, and this dindy guitar that now uh, stands here in my room on its stand and at some stage hung behind me on the wall really represents that. I think of all that when I uh, when I see it. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention that makes this whole thing come full circle is that the lead vocalist of Fuzzy Gish, the band that signed a guitar, I actually got the opportunity to interview the lead vocalist in the same paintball podcast. Man, was that an experience. So you can probably understand why this guitar has got a very, very special place in my office. And when Francie jams on it, man, how cool is that? Circle of life. Oh, and uh, talking about interesting things, um, I wanted to share this. Uh, and it's kind of a sign of the times kind of thing. And you might not find this super interesting, but I was kind of blown away. So in South Africa, one thing my dad taught me is that if you want to create something, first look at perhaps maybe making it yourself. My dad is a huge DIY person. And uh, I've been known to do things. Uh, my first ever motorcycle, I built from scratch. Um, I helped restore a car with my dad. 
Um, and during the, my paintball playing days, I was in the garage, in the workshop many a time, trying to manufacture small little fittings and things that I required. It was really hard to get into South Africa. And recently, I wanted to find a way to store the longboard. Oh, here he goes again, talking about his longboard. And um, I just couldn't find anything that I could use to mount my longboard out of the way because my poor wife and son keeps on bumping into it and uh, I wanted to store it in a way where I can grab it and go. And um, I don't really have the facilities here to go into the garage and make something. I don't have space. But uh, I managed to do that in a very, very modern way. So let me explain. So I went online and I found a design that the guy did somewhere. I actually didn't even check where the guy was from, but he made a digital design of a little mount that I thought would work really great to attach my longboard to the wall. And uh, he made this design of available as a small little 3D file for free. I downloaded the file and then I found a service online that allows you to 3D print this design. Um, they have many print places all over the world and just happened to have one in Poznan, which is a big city here in Poland. And I sent it away. It's relatively expensive. I think I paid about, I don't want to lie to you, about 70 zloty to get this done for a very, very small little piece of plastic that was 3D printed. So I overpaid completely. But I just find it so interesting that I found the design, sent it off, got it printed, got shipped back to me in the mail, and then I drilled a few holes, and voila, my longboard is now attached to the wall. And I can deattach it easily and jump on and go wherever I want to go. How cool is this world we're living in? Right? Yes! Na 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 na